Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, quick reminder, this video is being brought to us by the Sonoran Desert Institute. That's right. Arming America through education, preserving our inalienable rights through education. Check out all their amazing programs and register today. All of that information in the description box below. Hey, New Jersey, we just did this video. And on this video, we talked about California's dumbest gun law. And when you're talking about California's dumbest gun law in a state that has a lot of dumb gun laws, well, then you must be talking about something that is completely insane. Well, guess what? It appears that you guys have the same law also. That's right. Apparently, your Second Amendment rights, if you're a New Jersey resident, has a monthly quota on it. You can only purchase one firearm every 30 days. Well, guess what? A court in California didn't think that was very cool, and now the Firearms Policy Coalition, feeling a little bolden, where well, they're going to go ahead and try to knock the head off of that law in New Jersey as well. So today... Let's geek out on the complaint and let's talk about the case to stop New Jersey's dumbest gun law. Okay, America and New Jersey, the case we're talking about is called Struck v. Platkin. It is a lawsuit that is brought by the Firearms Policy Coalition, who are just really feeling the mojo right now. And so they decided to take all of the good juju they got going, take it out to the state of New Jersey and see if they can knock some heads in there. This is a challenge to New Jersey's law, quite similar to California, that apparently sets a quota on your constitutional Second Amendment right. You can only purchase one firearm every 30 days in the state of New Jersey. The Firearms Policy Coalition, emboldened by their big win in California, has filed a complaint on this case. And uh, I listen, I will give credit to them. Not only are they having a good week, I like very clear, concise complaints. This is a very brief but well-written complaint, so it didn't give me like 45, 50 pages to read, so thanks for everyone over at FPC for that. The complaint basically starts off like this. This case presents a simple question of law. The Second Amendment to the United States guarantees the right of the people to keep and bear arms, plural, which should not be infringed. The plain language of the Second Amendment extends prima facie to all instruments that constitute bearable arms today. As the Supreme Court found in Heller and reiterated in Bruin, handguns are indisputably in common use. Plaintiffs wish to engage in constitutionally protected conduct by acquiring more than one handgun in a 30-day period for lawful purposes. But New Jersey law and defendants' policies and enforcement practices, here and after the OGM ban, prohibit and criminalizes this conduct. That's right. It is the dreaded one gun a month law, OGM. And I know many of you are sitting there going, you know, I've, I've been geeking out on this channel. I've been geeking out on a lot of other channels. I'm becoming a little bit of a Second Amendment scholar myself. And I thought that there needed to be some type of, you know, historical tradition of us restricting firearms in the same way. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. And of course, the complaint then points out, New Jersey cannot carry its burden because there is no constitutionally relevant history that supports the OGM ban. Other courts, to consider laws similar to New Jersey's OGM ban, have found them to be unconstitutional. Yes, most recently, Nguyen v. Bonta earlier this week. By enforcing its OGM ban, defendants are infringing upon the plaintiff's fundamental, constitutionally guaranteed right to keep and bear arms. Thus, the plaintiffs seek the appropriate remedies to declare New Jersey's OGM ban unconstitutional and enjoin its enforcement. Now, I guarantee you, I'll put money on this, that the state of New Jersey is going to respond is, is that this is about buying firearms or accumulating firearms. This has nothing to do with the right to keep or bear firearms. And therefore, the Second Amendment is not even implicated. And they'll need to make that argument because if the Second Amendment is implicated, which it is, then New Jersey is going to have to justify it through historical analogs. And therein lies the major problem for New Jersey, which there are none. Let us remember, however, there is a litany of case law out there that says that the Second Amendment also guarantees all the ancillary rights necessary to ensure that the right can be carried out. The plaintiffs also point out, The Constitution contains no limitation on the frequency or number of arms that an individual may lawfully purchase or otherwise acquire, period, let alone in a 30-day period. New Jersey's OGM ban is not part of the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulations. That is true. And I have always said there really is no such thing as innovative gun control when you take a look at what the Bruin case demands. And obviously the plaintiffs here point that out as well. 
The first OGM-type law in the nation was not passed until 1975, and New Jersey's OGM ban was not passed until 2009. So the lawsuit has been filed, and of course many of you, if you're asking the correct questions, are saying, but Bill, what are the remedies that they are requesting? Because as we say all the time, hey, a lawsuit doesn't do you any good unless you get remedies. What specifically are the plaintiffs asking for? They're asking for this. A, declaratory judgment that New Jersey's OGM ban and defendants' enforcement thereof violates the right to keep and bear arms guaranteed under the Second and Fourteenth Amendments to the United States Constitution and is therefore unconstitutional and unenforceable. B, a permanent injunction prohibiting defendants and defendants' respective employees, officers, agents, representatives, and all those acting in concert or in participation with them, and all who receive notice of the injunction from enforcing New Jersey's OGM ban. The suit is pursuing under 42 United States Code Section 1983, which, again, because you all geek out on this channel, you know that is a deprivation of constitutional rights by an actor who's acting under the color of state law. This is going to be a very, very interesting suit to watch, especially in light of the progress that's already been made in California. The case, once again, is Struck v. Plotkin. We're going to link it up down below so that you can geek out on the complaint for yourself. Kudos to the Firearms Policy Coalition. You guys are having one hell of a week. Links down below for you to show them some love. If you got any questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington gun law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information, it's down there in the description box. If you got an idea for a video we should be doing, go ahead and click on that link. Let us know. It's probably going to be better than any idea we come up with. If you just want to subscribe to our monthly newsletter, the ability to do all of that, it's right down there in the description box. And then finally, and most importantly, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.